by the same token, it's up to each individual to look at things and say whether or not it's appropriate for them. We don't investigate people. We don't investigate members. We don't investigate vendors. We don't vouch for anyone as to their honesty, integrity, reliability, motives, or resources. And so that says that when you make a decision, that decision is made by you and, uh, and no one else. So in a lot, a lot of cases, we record events. I'm relatively sure this one is not being recorded, but when we do it, it is the uh, property of Freedom First Real Estate Investment Association. Any questions so far? Okay. Oops, I guess I hit the wrong button. There's the right button. So agenda that looks like that. Um, from a recognition standpoint, one of the things that I want to do is uh, just recognize a few folks. Um, so we had, uh, and I'm recognizing folks because this group doesn't work. It doesn't exist. It doesn't provide anything without people, basically, for this not-for-profit organization where folks don't get paid. Susan and Joe and I, we've been trying to figure out how we get $100 million, and then we recognize, well, it's not Google that you're a part of, you know? So we have to try to come up with something else, and it's like, okay, forget about the money. You better do it for fun. So, um, and basically, that's where we are. And, and all that said, it's really not possible to do it without the help of others. So we had, um, in the last month or so, we had an under one roof golf, golf off, off outing. My goodness, I mean, I need another drink of wine or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where uh, Andy McQuaid, uh, Beth Sharp, and Pat Gallagher, they, they basically, helped us by being at that event, at that event and representing uh, at, uh, our activity and our, we actually made a fairly large donation to Under One Roof, which is really aimed at allowing folks to understand that if you look at the marketplace today, where you have people who are renters and people who are landlords that the world works a lot better when both groups really work together. So uh, we had a golf outing that was put on by that coalition group under one roof where Freedom First is a coalition partner. And, and you know, basically uh, those folks went, Andy and Beth and Pat uh, were there to represent freedom first and what it was that we're doing. So this is just a way of saying thank you. We really appreciate the fact that you guys were there and you were willing to help us. Um, then the second thing is we have an annual picnic every year that's done in August. And I wanted to make sure that I say thank you to all the people who allowed us to put this on Clearly, it's a challenging time from the perspective of COVID-19, uh, and uh, that made things uh, quite a bit more difficult. Uh, and so at the last minute, for example, uh, not absolutely last minute, but like a day, a day and a half before, we're told you can only have exactly this number of people. And we were getting it from basically New York State that was saying, you can't have them anywhere be above this amount of folks. And so it impacted them. People were there. Still had a great event, had a great time. And um, the people that I wanted to make sure that I gave a special thanks to, recognizing that, you know, particularly uh, Beth and Pat and Carl, and I can go on and on. Those guys were there and they were also happened out, but Pat Burke, she helped by having her folks, her folks, a son and a grandson and a couple other, three, four other folks there that help us uh, with some of the things that needed to take place to uh, ensure that we were able to provide the level of service that was needed. And 
like most of the past uh, picnics, Dee Thompson was there and she, she was her normal self. She was just absolutely outstanding in the way that she was able to allow us to do those things that necessary to get the picnic done and squared away. So thanks to those two people and all the others that helped us. So I wanted to give some quick updates associated with coming events. And one of the key things is on October 8th, we're gonna have the October general meeting. The speaker is gonna be Chris Sardone. He's the CPA that does a lot of the things associated with um, accounting and how do you do real estate accounting. He does a lot of taxes for a lot of folks. He is also a proponent of um, equity trust companies. I've give, given him a lot of uh, input that that's the way that he should be doing things. So, um, and, and he actually said, this person is interested in you, self-directed IA, Leon, can you help him? And he'll send the person to me. So uh, have a couple of examples of that in the past year. So uh, he'll, he'll be able to answer a lot of the questions that um, you may have as a member, for example, if you are uh, a person who have your, have your own business, can you have a self-directed IRA? Can you set one up? Can you do some of those things? My understanding from talking to Chris is absolutely, you certain, certainly can, and he knows exactly how to do it. So, um, so Chris can answer a lot of the questions that you may have associated with that. And then uh, we move to November. One of the things that we're doing, uh, starting with the November meeting, is we're starting to do a, um, as you guys know, let me just sort of step back. As you guys know, we had a summit that we used to have in October. So we're setting up a summit workshop series where we'll have a presenter that will come in and follow generally the format that we're following right now with Kent and the extra and the equity trust uh, company. And so it'll be similar to that where someone puts on a presentation and they may cover everything or they may have a following follow, a following meeting that is a follow up to what they have presented before. And so it'll the subject matter will vary. The individuals will be some national and some that are local. And we're still working through some of those things. But when we get to the, uh, the meeting coming up in October, we have some of that finalized. December, want to touch base on that. Um, the holiday party, I'm just going to say it's still something that's uh, much in question. Uh, the picnic was one of the greater challenges in my freedom first lifetime from the perspective that uh, with COVID-19, all the things that were going on, is it something that we should do or is it something that should just be passed over? Got a lot of input from a lot of folks um, and sort of use that as uh, input for the board to say, okay, it's something we're going to go forward with, uh, recognizing that um, there's probably no right answer or wrong answer, but you just want to make sure that nothing uh, bad happens. And so it's all about risk and risk tolerance and those sorts of things. And we made that discussion, made that decision. But the discussion here is really associated with the fact that in December, the holiday party is normally inside, inside a restaurant. And we normally have 120 people or so. And that's a different sort of challenge. So we'll see what that turns out at. So uh, any questions for anyone associated with the pieces that I've just went over? <clears throat> Okay, so, um, you know, at this point in time, if no one has any questions, I really want to sort of turn the evening over to a large extent to our keynote and guest speaker, Kent Kensler with Equity Trust Company. He's the business development, development senior manager, and he provides educational resources to uh, real estate and alternative asset investors. So. Uh, alternative asset investors. So that's that something like Bitcoins and those sorts of things or, uh, you know, probably a number of other things that fits in that general category. So I've known him for a while. I met him personally face to face and um, he's a great guy. 
you know, and you, you say, well, what's great? Great is he tells you what he's going to do. He tells you how he's going to do it. And you recognize that you didn't need the part about how he's going to do it. You know he's going to do it right because otherwise he wouldn't call you. So I, uh, I feel I always feel comfortable and confident when working with Kent. And if you want to find out more information about uh, some of the things I could read through now, just go to the website and you, you'll be able to see it there. So without further ado, I really want to sort of hand the mic over to Kent and have him go through and talk about uh, the things that are going to be coming up tonight, his presentation, and then the things that comes with one of the best presenters that I've seen associated with uh, uh, self-directed IRAs, how they work, a, great, a lot of great examples, and that is uh, John Bowen. And so I'm going to turn it over to Kent. Kent, you got the mic now. You got you you have the the whole thing. And so okay. thank you, and I appreciate your being here with us tonight. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Leon. Give me just a second. It's uh, still saying that um, I cannot share uh, while the other presenter is sharing. If you could stop sharing your screen, I'll uh, put up my slides. Absolutely. So while we're doing that, let me just take a minute um, to uh, tell you a little bit about uh, myself and Equity Trust. Um, as Leon said, I've been uh, with Equity Trust for uh, about 10 years now. Uh, prior to that, uh, I, I, I'm a farm boy. I grew up in, uh, in Nebraska on a farm. Um, and uh, tell you what, I couldn't wait to get off the farm because uh, farming's a lot of work. Um, so after college, uh, that's when I first got bitten by the real estate bug. Uh, started uh, investing in real estate uh, in college, which was uh, many, many years ago. Uh, oh, now, can, can everyone see my, uh, my screen? I want to make yep. sure I'm sharing. Okay, good. Um, and just like Leon said, uh, I, wish I, I wish I knew back then about a self-directed IRA and uh, the impact that that would have had on my finances compared to uh, you know, doing well, but uh, being able to invest in real estate in a tax-advantaged manner and even a tax-free manner, had I known that 20, 30 years ago, uh, that would have made a tremendous impact for me and my family. Um, so before I get started, let me, let me say one thing. Um, I get to travel the country with uh, Equity Trust, talking to real estate investors, meeting real estate investors at RIAs. And I can tell you, some of the most successful people I meet, they have one thing in common, and that is that they are an active participant in their local RIA. Uh, with Freedom First, uh, you have people like Leon and Joe and Susan who have been in this, uh, in this business for many, many years. Work with that knowledge. It's available to you, be an active participant in the RIA. Cannot stress that enough. Uh, without a doubt, you get out of ARIA what you put into it. So when, uh, when Joe and, and, and uh, Leon need volunteers, don't be afraid to raise your hand. That's how you're gonna learn more. Uh, interact with, uh, with the other RIA members. Uh, cannot stress that enough. I uh, just wanna, uh, wanna say you have great resources available to you. Make sure you're using them to the full extent. So let me, uh, let me tell you a little bit about what we're gonna cover tonight. Um, we're going to, uh, we're going to be talking about self-directed IRAs, uh, what they are, uh, how they work with real estate. There's seven different types of accounts. I'm going to go through each of the accounts very quickly. Um, just want to talk about the taxation. I want to give you some high level information. As Leon said, we're going to be back uh, to do a, a virtual workshop and I'll talk to you a little bit about the workshop uh, at the end of the presentation. Um, and then I uh, go through some case studies of what our clients are doing, how they're putting uh, the vehicle, the self-directed IRA to work for them. I uh, really want you to learn in the eyes of our clients. And then what the next steps are. The next step is not to open an account. Uh, the next step is to attend the workshop. And uh, this is an, an online workshop that we're going to be doing. Uh, this is going to be a free workshop. Uh, we're not charging for this workshop. It's going to be on uh, Tuesday, the 22nd of September. Um, I just checked the uh, registration before I came on. It was at 92. Uh, so we, we will have several hundred people uh, online with this workshop. As Leon said, John Bowens, uh, the person who's going to be putting this workshop on, he is the very best speaker in our industry. Uh, works for Equity Trust, thank, thank goodness. Um, he has trained over 50,000 real estate investors uh, on how to use self-directed IRAs. Uh, oversees, uh, over, uh, oversees our sales staff, but he's also our national speaker. 
Um, nobody is more gifted at uh, real estate investing with a self-directed IRA strategy than John Bowens. Um, he, will, uh, he will be teaching for three, three and a half hours, um, over delivers all the time. So I can't emphasize uh, the, uh, the level of knowledge that John has and the level of knowledge that he's gonna be bringing to the table uh, on the 22nd. Now, if you've ever attended an equity trust talk or any of our competitors, this is a, a very important slide, but it's also a, very, it's a required slide. You have to understand who we are and what we do. Um, equity trust is a passive custodian. That means I'm not allowed to give you any tax, legal, or financial advice. Um, Tonight's presentation is about education. Um, whenever you're doing an investment, make sure that you're doing your due diligence. Know who you're investing with, um, what you're investing in. Surround yourself with people uh, who are trusted advisors to you. Um, reach out to people in the RIA. Uh, make sure that, uh, that you're, you're doing your own due diligence. Uh, make sure you have an attorney, that you have a real estate uh, uh, broker, that you, uh, you have a CPA that you trust. Uh, you know, get a good team of people around you and people like Leon can help you with that. So what I'm gonna to do tonight is going to be for educational purposes only. Um, just keep that in mind as I'm going through the presentation. This is not for any legal, tax, or financial advice. So a little bit about Equity Trust, and it actually ties back into ARIA. Um, our, our company, Equity Trust, actually got its start at a RIA meeting. Um, our founder, Dick Desich, uh, he was actually attending a RIA meeting in Akron, Ohio, uh, he's an active real estate investor himself. Uh, the RIA meeting that particular night was talking about um, saving for retirement. You know, he went there looking for people to invest in a real estate deal. And the light bulb went off. He said, like, can I use people's retirement accounts to fund my real estate deal? Following the meeting, Mr. Desich went back, met with his attorneys, met with his CPAs. They started looking into uh, if there's any, anything in tax code that says this cannot happen. So after that meeting, in a RIA meeting in Akron, Ohio, uh, he put together uh, one of the very first real estate deals where uh, it involved using people's retirement account to fund that deal. From that single investment, uh, Equity Trust now, now has over 170,000 clients. We custody $28.7 billion in assets. Most of what we do is real estate, but I'll get into the various things that you can do with a self-directed IRA. We are, are an IRS approved custodian. Um, I'll get into that a little uh, bit in the presentation, why that's so important. With equity trust, uh, we, we invest in alternative assets uh, as well as traditional. So if you wanted to have stocks, bonds, and mutual funds on our, our platform, uh, you can. And I'll get into our uh, customer service. We do have clients uh, in all 50 states, but just a little bit about equity trust. Uh, this is our uh, corporate headquarters in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. It's actually Westlake, Ohio. We also have offices in, West, in um, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and Denver, Colorado as well. Write this down, compounding interest in the absence of taxation. Uh, very much a theme of what I'm gonna be talking about tonight and the theme of what we're gonna be talking about on the 22nd. Uh, I take it one step further and say, consider real estate investing in the absence of taxation. Real estate investing in the absence of taxation and what that would mean to you. So again, this is the theme tonight, and certainly John Bowens will get, uh, get into this in great, great detail at the workshop on the 22nd. Here's a good, uh, good slide that really uh, represents what we do. So the uh, numbers on the left is if you're investing uh, outside of an IRA, uh, and, and the numbers on the, uh, on the right, if you're investing inside of an IRA, uh, the, numbers, uh, the numbers are a $20,000 investment, invested over 20 years with 12% rate of return. Difference of course is, uh, the one on the left, you're paying taxes every year, 25% tax bracket. This is an $80,000 difference. Now imagine if you were investing in a Roth IRA where this would be tax free, where the taxes would not have to be paid uh, when you start taking the money out. This is what I wanna to talk to you about tonight. Gonna to give a couple of, uh, couple of um, assignments to you. Assignment number one, go out and pick up the book, The Power of Zero. The Power of Zero by David McKnight. We don't get any endorsement for talking about the book. It's just a really, really good book on how to set yourself up to have a 0% effective tax bracket when you retire. My spouse and I started reading this book and putting it into action about five years ago. 
um, and started moving our money from our taxable buckets to our tax-free buckets. Um, I retire in about four more years. By the time I retire, all of my, uh, all of my retirement funds will be in Roth IRAs. Uh, it doesn't matter what happens in Washington after that. Everything I have will be in a tax-free environment. Uh, it's it, it's, it's a, a great read. I can't say enough about it. It's a quick read. I really recommend that people go out and pick up that book. So the first thing I always want to ask is what is a self-directed IRA? If I'm uh, you know, at your meeting live, I'd be asking, uh, asking for a show of hands. But in the interest of time, I'll actually just give you the answer. There's actually no such thing as a self-directed IRA. That is just an industry term that we came up with. A self-directed you know, self IRA actually does not differ than a, than a normal IRA at all. It's not the IRA that's different, it's the custodian that holds that account. So Equity Trust is a custodian that specializes in holding alternative assets. And alternative asset is anything outside of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Most of our clients invest in real estate, maybe real estate uh, notes where they're, they're, they're lending their money out, uh, but it's really whatever you have knowledge of, whatever you have expertise in. To give you an example, we have uh, one client uh, out of uh, Kentucky. He uh, actually, his IRA owned part of a racehorse that ran in the Kentucky Derby. The horse didn't win, uh, but uh, what, the way his retirement account is growing is the stud fees from that horse now. That's what's going back into the IRA because the IRA owns that horse. So it's really you know, quite diverse. Whatever you have knowledge of, whatever you have expertise in, uh, that's what you can be investing in with your self-directed IRA. There's only a few things that the IRS says you cannot invest in. It's a very, very small list. Uh, it's art, antiques, collectibles, alcoholic beverages, S corporations, and life insurance policies. Those are the only things that you cannot invest in with a self-directed IRA. Everything else, the world's really open to you. So as I said, there are seven different types of accounts that I wanna go over. Um, I really wanna talk about the taxation of the accounts. And then on the, uh, the workshop on the 22nd, John will go into much greater detail account by account, and then uh, have case studies uh, behind each one of the accounts. But to just uh, introduce the accounts, they fall into three different buckets. Uh, number one is the individual accounts that any of us can have. Uh, the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA. Uh, traditional IRAs have been around since uh, 1973. Um, traditional uh, is a tax deferred vehicle, meaning that uh, when you put the money into the account, uh, you get to take, uh, take that amount off of your ordinary income tax and you're paying less taxes that year. The flip side is when you take the money out in your retirement years, uh, you then uh, have to add those monies to your, uh, to your ordinary income tax and you pay taxes on it when you retire. Roth IRAs, uh, those are sometimes called a tax-free IRA. No such thing as a tax-free IRA, it just means that you're paying the taxes uh, before you make the investment. Um, whatever your account grows to is then tax-free. So your, your growth is then tax-free. And I'll illustrate this and show you how to move money between the two, uh, the, the two buckets. If you're self-employed, definitely wanna make sure you come to the, uh, the event on the 22nd. We will get into the self-employed uh, plans in great detail. The advantage of some of these accounts is you can get much greater, uh, uh, greater amounts of money into the accounts. A solo 401k. Uh, and a Roth solo K primarily. Uh, you, can get, uh, you have to meet certain income requirements, but you can get up to $57,000 a year into a Roth solo K. Uh, once you turn uh, at the age of 50, then it goes up to 63,500. Uh, there are some requirements. We will go over those requirements, uh, but the, the small business plans have tremendous flexibility. Wanna make sure that if you're self-employed, uh, you, you listen to the workshop on the 22nd, We'll be going over this in very great detail. And then finally, there are two alternative accounts, uh, the Coverdale Education Savings Account, or the CESA. Uh, as the title might say, uh, might indicate, uh, it's for educational purposes. I do have a slide coming up on it. And then the Health Savings Account for, uh, for uh, medical expenses. Uh, and uh, the Coverdale Education Savings Account and the Health Savings Account also works as a, a Roth IRA, meaning it, it's, uh, its growth is tax-free when it's used for its intended purposes. So I'll go into greater details in these in just a moment. So the question I always ask is, when do you wanna pay the taxes? Do you wanna pay the taxes on the seed or do you wanna pay the taxes on the crop? 
seed of the crop. Obviously, you want to pay taxes when it's as small as possible. You want to pay your taxes on the seed. Believe it or not, most people don't do that. Uh, the vast majority of people are invested into a traditional IRA, meaning that you're going to pay the taxes on the crop. I want to go over that and hopefully, uh, hopefully switch some, uh, some thinking uh, of what we could do. So traditional IRAs, those are your employer-sponsored plans. So if you have a 401k, a 403b, a thrift savings plan, or a pension plan, those all fall under the umbrella of a traditional IRA. If you're self-employed, your SEP account, your simple account, uh, your solo K account, those are traditional IRAs, meaning that as you put the money in, you get a tax deduction. Uh, when you take the money out in retirement years, then that income is added to your ordinary income tax, and that's when you're going to be pay, uh, paying taxes on it. As I said, anyone can open an individual traditional IRA, um, and if you're under the age of 50, you can put $6,000 a year in. Over the age of 50, you can put 7,000. You have to have earned income uh, to uh, have one of these accounts. You have to have earned income. Uh, passive income, if you only have rental income, that does not work. Uh, so you have to create, uh, you have to create uh, earned income, something that you're paying social security, something that you're paying uh, ordinary income tax on. That's, the, uh, that's the, uh, the minimum to get into this. If you, um, the spousal accounts, uh, if you work, but your spouse does not, you can open an account in your spouse's name as well and make contributions to both accounts. So with the individual accounts or traditional IRA, uh, the spousal accounts do apply as well. And the last thing I'll say about traditional is that they do have uh, what's called a required minimum distribution or RMD, uh, meaning that at the age of 72, if you haven't started drawing down these accounts, you do have to start taking, uh, uh, taking a, um, a distribution. That's because the government has never collected their taxes on these accounts yet. So at some point in time, they wanna make sure they're getting their tax bill paid. So at age 72, uh, with a traditional IRA, you do have to start taking your required minimum distributions. So just an illustration on a, 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 a traditional, uh, traditional account. You put the money in, uh, it's free of taxes, your tax exempt, uh, the account is growing in your working years, and at the age of 59 and a half, that's a very important number, 59 and a half is when you can start taking money out of an account, and it's not, uh, it, it, it's uh, penalty free. It's not 62, it's not 65, it's at 59 and a half, that is, uh, that is when you have uh, hit uh, the retirement age recognized by the government. So at age 59 and a half, when you start taking money out of a traditional account, uh, that uh, whatever you take out is added to your income tax for that year, your ordinary income, that's what you're gonna pay taxes on. Give you an illustration, or uh, just to uh, give you a tutorial of it, uh, distributions begin at 59 and a half. If you take your money out prior to 59 and a half, that is, there is a 10% penalty, and then you're still having to pay taxes on that as well. So distributions prior to 59 and a half, you, uh, you do have a 10% penalty. Distributions post 59, they're just added to your ordinary income tax and that's what you're gonna pay your taxes on. So as an example, if you, if you have an account that's a million dollar account, uh, you take out $100,000 your first year, if you're in a 20% effective tax bracket, then you're gonna owe $20,000 in taxes. So that's just how the traditional, uh, traditional IRA accounts work. And then again, uh, required minimum distributions, it does kick in at 72. I love talking about Roth IRAs. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go over Roths in great, great detail at our workshop. Uh, the Roth IRA is named for William Roth. He's a senator out of Delaware, uh, late senator out of Delaware, but he's a very tenacious senator. He introduced the legislation nine times before it was actually adopted into law. But a Roth IRA allows you to put money in post-tax, I meaning you've already paid the taxes on it, Anything you invest in, anything you grow that account to is then tax-free. Um, give you an example. It really got on the, uh, uh, the radar a few presidential cycles ago when uh, Mitt Romney was uh, making a speech and he made a comment about his $100 million Roth IRA. Uh, yes, people, people have those mega Roths. Um, you know, he was investing into a startup tech company that uh, went ballistic. And, uh, and, and yes, his, his solo K, his, his Roth, uh, Roth solo K, was valued over $100 million. We don't talk about our clients' accounts. He made it public knowledge. 
And that's why I can talk about that. Um, but uh, you know, you know, he had the same limitations that all of us do in terms of what he can put the money, how much money he could put in a year. The difference is what he knew in his knowledge. So any of us have, uh, can get that knowledge. Uh, we're here at ARIA to get to real estate knowledge. Uh, that's why you're a member of Freedom First, uh, is to get the real estate knowledge from, uh, from leaders like Leon. Um, so with a, with a Roth IRA, uh, it can be funded a couple of different ways. Uh, if you have an existing Roth IRA, uh, that Roth IRA can be transferred from one custodian to another. Uh, it doesn't create a taxable event. So transferring a Roth IRA to equity trust is one way of getting, uh, getting a, uh, an IRA over to equity trust. And then you're investing into real estate or real estate back notes. Any of us can also have a, an individual Roth IRA. Just like with the traditional accounts, the limitations are the same. Under the age of 50, $6,000. Over the age of 50, you have the catch-up provision, so it's $7,000. And just like with traditional IRAs, if I work but my spouse does not, I can open an account in my spouse's name, and I can make contributions to both accounts. So you just have to have earned income enough to make contributions into both accounts. What I love about a Roth IRA is there, is, there are no required minimum distributions. So meaning if I don't need the money in my lifetime, I can pass the account to my spouse. It doesn't create a taxable event for my spouse. Uh, the, the money passes to my spouse. And, uh, she can continue to invest it, can you continue to grow it. Uh, and and uh, when uh, she takes the uh, distributions, that's tax-free. doesn't get added to ordinary income tax because the taxes have already been paid. Um, when you leave a Roth, to another generation, so uh, leave it to your kids, for example. Um, then there is uh, a, new, a new rule that just came about with the CARES Act and, and the SECURE Act, uh, where now a Roth, when it passes to another generation, uh, they will have to distribute that account over a 10-year period. Um, it's not taxable, it's in a Roth IRA, so when you leave it to your heirs, again, this, uh, this passes to them in a tax-free environment. Uh, the, one thing, the other thing I'll say is if you do leave it uh, to, uh, to a minor child, uh, then uh, that 10 year period does not kick in until they hit majority of age uh, 18. Uh, so then from 18 on, they have 10 years uh, to take that money out. And again, it's in a Roth, uh, a Roth IRA, so that's tax free. Just a quick illustration, then I want to get into a couple of um, um, case studies. With a Roth IRA, uh, the money goes in after you pay the taxes. So you've already paid taxes on it. Um, the money goes into the IRA. You're investing, investing, investing at age 59 and a half, same age. That's, uh, th that is the recognizable retirement age. At age 59 and a half, when I take my money out of my Roth, I, do, I don't pay any taxes. doesn't matter what the growth was, I don't pay any taxes. They're very, very important. So staying on the Roth IRA, and again, we're gonna go into to the Roth in, in pretty uh, great detail at our, at our workshop, is we really want to drive home that people can be investing in real estate uh, in a tax-free environment. Um, some people say, look, I make too much money. I don't, I don't qualify for a Roth. Uh, yes, there are modified adjusted gross uh, income requirements. Uh, this is the chart that you're seeing in front of you. I love when Congress makes a law because they always have, have a way of getting around it almost um, the slang term is a backdoor IRA. Um, it's really nothing more than an IRA conversion. Anyone, any of us, regardless of income, uh, can open an individual IRA. When you, uh, individual IRAs, uh, $6,000 to $7,000, uh, depending upon if you're under 50, over the age of 50. So if I'm a high net worth, uh, 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 high net uh, income individual, I can open my account, make my annual personal um, contribution and convert that account to a Roth IRA. Uh, my accountant would file a form 8806, uh, letting the IRS know that I took a non-taxable, uh, made a non-taxable IRA contribution. So I'm not gonna pay any taxes on it. So any of us, regardless of income, uh, can have a Roth IRA. It's just a matter of con uh, converting uh, from a traditional to a Roth. Um, I've got a few more slides. I, I want to make sure people understand this point and how you can convert. One other rule when you are converting your Roth money, 
uh, there is a five-year seasoning rule. So if I converted money from a traditional to a Roth IRA, I can't take that growth out for five years, even if I'm over the age of 59 and a half. Uh, if I did, uh, then there would be a penalty. Uh, so there is a five-year seasoning rule that you have to be aware of um, on uh, when you're converting uh, from a traditional to a Roth IRA. Moving on, just to, uh, just to give you an illustration on Roth conversions, uh, if I had a $100,000 a traditional IRA uh, and I wanted to convert the entire $100,000 uh, to, uh, to a Roth IRA, if I'm in a 20% effective tax bracket, I would owe the IRS $20,000. But the beauty is once that, once that money is in a Roth IRA, whatever I invest in, whatever I grow that account to is now 100% tax free. So I'm doing my real estate investing out of this Roth IRA. Whatever I grow that account to, I'm not gonna pay any more taxes on it. So that, this is an illustration of converting the entire amount. Um, I, like, uh, I like that the, uh, the IRS allows us to do as many conversions uh, for whatever denominations we want to throughout the year. Uh, so if I wanted to convert only 50,000, uh, again, 20% tax bracket, I would owe 10,000. Um, I'll tell you, when my spouse and I started uh, doing our, uh, our conversions, uh, you know, following the steps of the power of zero, we started by doing just $10,000 the first year, just to see our tax consequence. Um, then, we, th then we sat down and did our roadmap uh, from, uh, from, I think it was uh, 11 years when we first started, how much can we convert each year and what, what's the tax consequence? Uh, that's, uh, that's the instructions that you'll get out, out of the power of zero. Uh, but to get yourself set up to have a 0% effective tax bracket uh, before you retire, it's very, very powerful. Um, and again, there is no limit on how many times you can convert and for what denomination. So if you wanted to convert in $1,000 increments, you could. The other thing I'll say is the, uh, the tax bill. You can pay the taxes inside of the IRA or outside of the IRA. So if, uh, if I wanted to pay this inside of the IRA with this example, my $50,000 would, uh, would become $40,000 if I was paying inside of the IRA. So there are multiple, multiple ways that you can get your money converted. Uh, but again, getting that into a Roth environment so that whatever you grow that account to is now going to be a completely tax-free investment from there on out. Okay. A couple more accounts that I want to get onto uh, some, uh, some case studies and some examples so you can see how people are putting this to work. The health savings account, probably the most versatile of all accounts, but very, very overlooked. Uh, versatile because it's the only account that lives in both the traditional and the tax-free environment. Uh, when you make your contributions to a health savings account, uh, you get to take that money as a tax deduction. So, uh, you get to lower your ordinary income tax for that year. Whatever your account grows to when you take it out is tax-free. So it, it, uh, its growth is in a Roth environment. Very powerful. Um, understand that a uh, health savings account, this is for medical expenses. So your future medical expenses. Uh, any qualified medical expenses of prescription, a doctor's visit, a nursing home, um, this is what a health savings account can be used for. Uh, we're all going to have medical expenses eventually. Uh, you can be paying for your, your future medical expenses with your real estate investing now. Uh, so again, tax deferred, also a tax free uh, when you take the money out for qualified medical expenses. And lastly, I want to talk about the Coverdale Education Savings Account. Uh, anyone can open a Coverdale Education Savings Account for a minor child. Uh, it's a $2,000 uh, annual contribution limit. Uh, it does have to be managed by the parent or guardian. So I can open an account for my grandchild, uh, but it has to be managed by the parent or guardian. Um, the, uh, the account lives in that Roth environment. So it grows tax-free so long as I take it out for an educational expense. And that's K through uh, post-secondary. So books, tuitions, uh, trips, um, you know, anything that you can think of, uh, qualified education expense, uh, that's, what the, that's what a Coverdale Education Savings Account can be used for. Um, does have to be used by the age of 30. If the child doesn't use it by the age of 30, they can transfer it to another family member. Um, worst case scenario, if they haven't used the money and they don't need it, then yes, they can take it out as a withdrawal. 
uh, but it, uh, in, in this case, then it would be added to your ordinary income tax and you would have to pay taxes on it because it wasn't used for educational expenses. Um, so I do keep that in mind. If the account is open for someone that has special needs, then that age 30 rule does not apply anymore. So uh, they, uh, they can keep that account growing. So uh, again, a very versatile account, uh, another account that lives in that tax-free environment, the Roth environment. So those are very quickly the seven different types of accounts. Um, we will go over in much greater detail and in a much slower fashion uh, on the workshop on the 22nd. And then John will put case studies behind each one of these accounts so you can see how people are, are, are growing uh, an account that they only put $2,000 into, what they're doing to grow these accounts and how they're investing it so you can see the, uh, the investment uh, that, that people are making. So now I want to get into a little bit about uh, some case studies. Um, all of these are, are real estate specific examples. Uh, they just so happen to be all, uh, all REIA members uh, that are clients of Equity Trust from around the country. And actually they're all REIA members of a national REIA chapter. Uh, so uh, let's talk uh, about a few of the case studies and then I want to get into a little bit more detail about the workshop. Um, and one report uh, that we will be sending to people and if anyone would like uh, the report 10 ways to partner with your IRA, um, I'll, I'll be giving out my email address. Just email me and I'll send you this report. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of the uh, examples tonight. Uh, we'll go over an example where a family is investing together. Uh, where a gentleman is, is investing uh, with his IRA and also his own money, uh, and then one that is just a, a straight IRA investment. Uh, but um, we have a report, 10 different ways to partner with your IRA. Uh, you can be partnering with your spouse's IRA, your child's IRA, um, non-recourse loan. Uh, but uh, on the workshop, we will go through an, a case study on uh, all 10 examples. Uh, but I do have this report uh, for you. When I give out my uh, email address, uh, just email me and I'll send you this report as well. So I want to first introduce Jan, Gary, and Brittany. Uh, Jan's the mother, Gary the father, Brittany is, uh, is the daughter. Um, they are uh, re members out of St. Louis. Uh, they first came to one of our workshops. It's been about 11 years now. Um, at the time, Brittany was only 14. Uh, she is uh, now in, now in uh, law school. Um, so um, uh, Jan is a real estate uh, broker out of St. Louis. Uh, Gary is an engineer. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, Brittany is in her last year of uh, law school. So this is a fam family model I want to talk about. These are families investing together. Uh, three different Roth IRAs that, uh, that, that uh, they are investing in uh, to real estate and how they're growing their property. Um, motto is start early, retire early, and it's never too late. So this particular deal, this was the third deal that they had uh, done in their IRAs. The first couple of deals that they had done, uh, they, didn't, they didn't have enough money to do a deal outright in their IRA. Uh, so they did what's called a non-recourse loan. Um, and that's the type of loan that you can get uh, when you're doing a, uh, an IRA investment, meaning that just a property is securing that, uh, that loan and not the individual. So it's a non-recourse loan, uh, we'll go over uh, what they are, where you can find them at the workshop. We keep a list of them on our website. So this particular deal, uh, Jan's IRA had 42% of the deal. Gary's IRA, 55% of the deal. Brittany, she had a smaller account because at the time she was 14. Uh, she had 3% uh, of, uh, uh, of this deal. And you might say, well, if Brittany is only 14, how could she have an account? Um, with a Roth IRA, so long as you have earned income, there is no age limit of a Roth IRA. Uh, kind of a funny story, as far as we know, the youngest person ever to have a Roth IRA, that was our founder's first grandson. He was about four hours old before his picture was up on our website uh, and he was paid a modeling fee and you can watch him grow up every year uh, because that's how, that's how uh, his parents were contributing to his Roth IRA. Uh, he was paid a modeling fee. With Brittany, Brittany worked for Jan's office. Um, you know, she did uh, some office duties and uh, they put her on the payroll just enough to have a Roth IRA. Uh, so again, had to have earned income to get into the game, but uh, it's what you do with it uh, that makes the difference. So again, uh, this, this is their third deal. They came together as a family to do this deal. Project overview, um, they bought the property for 306,000. Uh, and again, everything is split uh, in, in, in accordance to how much each person has of the deal. 
when you're investing with, uh, with IRA monies, it's very important that everything flow in and out of the accounts in proportion to what each investor has in this deal. So even something as small as the earnest money, you know, 3% from, uh, from Britney's, 42% from Jan's, 55% with Gary's. You have to follow those rules. Uh, you can't make the investment in one account and put all the profits into another account. Uh, that's, that's not allowed. You have to, as we say, swim in your right lanes. Um, moving on, in the, even with the renovations, uh, the renovations had to be paid for out of each account in proportion to what each investor had in this deal. Um, with our workshop, we actually went out and did a, uh, a video with Jan and Brittany. Um, and John will be playing that video uh, about some of the recent deals that they've done uh, with their IRA. Uh, so you'll actually hear from, uh, from Jan and Brittany uh, at, uh, at the workshop. Uh, Jan will be talking about the importance of staging a property. Uh, and what she does to get maximum, uh, maximum uh, dollars, uh, uh, maximum return. Um, she'll also be talking about the types of properties she buys, uh, what she's looking for in a property. Uh, so again, I, you know, one of the things I really like about uh, the workshop is yes, John's a phenomenal speaker. He's gonna be talking about a lot of his own deals that he's done, but a lot of it is hearing what our clients are doing. Uh, that's why I think what really, really adds the value is you're gonna hear about our clients directly from our clients and what they're doing. Um, so keep it on, uh, on the Jan, Gary, and Brittany. Uh, so you might think, well, there's a lot of moving parts in, uh, in these accounts. Um, Equity Trust has the most robust uh, uh, technology platform out there. Uh, everything that you can do with your investment can now be done online on a smartphone, um, on a tablet. You can actually purchase a uh, property, manage it completely uh, with your smartphone request a bill pay, uh, request a check being sent out uh, directly from your, your smartphone. Uh, John will go through the technology so you understand um, our platform and, and how to speed the investment along. Uh, if, you, if you're with your contractor and he needs something ACH directly into his account, you can watch the money leave your uh, smartphone and go into, the, uh, into your contractor's bank. Uh, it's really slick. Uh, John will actually demo, uh, demo it uh, using, uh, using some of his own uh, bill pays. As I said, uh, Jan is very, very uh, a huge believer in staging the properties. Uh, that's how she gets maximum return uh, on her investment. So these are a few of the before and after pictures uh, with, uh, with this particular deal. And she'll always say, develop the lower level. Um, the lower level is part of the house, uh, make it a living space. Uh, you're, you're, you're doubling the square footage, but uh, uh, with, with the same footprint. Uh, so she always, uh, always uh, develops the lower level and she'll talk to you about uh, what she does and why she does it for, uh, for return. So when this property sold for 767,000, again, the money flowed back into each account in proportion to, to what the original investment was. Because this was all out of a Roth IRA, that $164,000 that they got after taxes, that's completely tax-free. Completely tax-free because uh, this was all our Roth IRAs. Um, again, this was, uh, this was deal done in uh, 2003, uh, I'm sorry, 2013. Uh, in, uh, at the workshop, they'll be talking about uh, the deals that they have done last year and, and, and uh, the first couple months of this year. Uh, so they'll, they'll talk to you about some of the deals that they're, they're uh, doing in their IRAs. And again, they're uh, investors out of St. Louis. So that was, uh, that was with three Roth IRAs. Uh, one of the case studies that John's gonna go through is, uh, is an investor that has 11 different accounts that he partners together uh, to do various deals. Um, and uh, Stan, uh, an investor actually out of uh, the Cleveland area, um, he uh, partners together his, uh, his, his account, his wife's account, his children's accounts, uh, their Coverdale Education Savings Account, his health savings account, even his in-laws accounts, uh, brings 11 different accounts together to do some very, very large deals and some creative deals. Uh, so that's one of the case studies uh, that John's gonna be going over. Uh, it can be um, very intricate investing. Uh, Stan uh, actually uh, refurbs um, med uh, medical imaging equipment. That is, uh, that's his level of expertise. That's what he's using these accounts to do. Uh, and then he rents them back to uh, doctor's offices. So that's the case study that John's gonna be going over. 
So the next case study I want to talk about is someone partnering with their IRA and their business. Um, this can all be done. Uh, it's very important that you work with your custodian right from the beginning to make sure that you put the, the structure together properly. That's one thing John's going to emphasize uh, at the workshop. John is a great architect of deals. Uh, so if you have questions, if you, if you have something that you're working on now, um, there, there's time to uh, interact with John, interact with uh, some of the people that will be on the line with John um, to, to get those questions answered. Again, uh, it's important that you, you partner with your custodian from the very beginning to make sure that the deal is structured properly and, and that can be done with your self-directed IRA. So this particular one, Gary, uh, Gary again is a uh, REA member out of, uh, of the Cleveland, Ohio area. Um, he partnered together his Roth IRA and money from his business. Uh, so Roth IRA and cash from his business. Very important that everything is titled uh, properly. And uh, the titling on this particular deal has to be equity trust, FBO, that stands for for benefit of, and then Gary's IRA. Now for anonymity purposes, you can also put the IRA uh, number that is assigned, uh, assigned by equity trust. Uh, so you can keep your name out of public record. John will go over uh, various ways of titling at the workshop. Um, and then the next phrase is undivided interest, 75%, and then uh, Gary's LLC, undivided interest 25 percent it's a long title but uh, for uh, for tax purposes that's the way something has to be titled because your ira is only part of this uh, part of this property uh, and then his his uh his business just like with the family example all of the repairs have to be paid proportionally so his ira had to make 75 percent of the payments and his his uh, uh business paid 25 percent so this, uh, this particular investment, 71.5, uh, after it sold in the closing cost, uh, it returned $25,875 to his Roth IRA. And because it's in a Roth, that's gonna be tax-free. The portion that was, uh, was cash, 86.25, that goes back to the business. Uh, that's gonna be added to his business, uh, uh, business income, and he'll be taxed, uh, taxed on the cash portion of this. But understand, uh, the takeaway here is you can partner with your IRA and your business, so long as you're doing it properly from the very beginning. Uh, work with your custodian, uh, make sure that you don't cross any lines, make sure that you, you do everything properly. Uh, what's important when you're doing IRA investing uh, is that uh, uh, right from the very beginning, if you're gonna do an IRA investment, your IRA, uh, if, if the IRA is gonna own the property, uh, even something as small as the earnest money has to be paid for out of the IRA. You can't write a check yourself and then call Equity Trust the next day to say, hey, I, I just put my earnest money down. I, I, want, I want, a, uh, want the IRA now to own this property. We can't do that because now you've disqualified it. Um, you, you've, been, you've started the paper trail. Always work with the custodian first and make sure that we, uh, you've gotten everything done, done and documented properly. The next deal I want to go over, um, also Gary uh, in Ohio, uh, this particular deal uh, was a very recent deal. Uh, he uh, thought it was just going to be very uh, quick in and out. It, it was a duplex he was going to flip, um, but uh, working with the real leader, uh, they, they ran the numbers and said, you know, this is probably something that we should hold just because of the numbers. Uh, so this was all done out of a Roth IRA, uh, $68,000 uh, purchase. Uh, there were some uh, improvements that were put into it, uh, $20,000 worth of improvements. Uh, it is a duplex. Both duplexes are currently rented, uh, so it's uh, $1,800 a month gross. Uh, but the reason why he uh, decided to, uh, to hold this is the after repair value of this particular property, 135 to 145. He's got about 88000 into it. So it's it's, uh, it's uh, cash flowing $1,800 that's uh, gross a month. Uh, he, knew, he knows if he needs to get out of this property, it's an easy one that he'd be able to get out of. Uh, so this particular one, uh, you know, knowing your strategies, what's available to you, sitting down with, uh, with someone who has a lot of knowledge like a real leader, uh, and, and looking at a couple different strategies, this particular one, Gary decided to hold uh, because you know, the, the number just made sense for him. I love this one, real estate joint venture. Uh, the beauty of a real estate joint venture, so the, the, the previous examples 
uh, were people who were related to each other. Um, when, uh, when you're investing with someone who is uh, related to you, um, all of the profits have to flow back proportionally. If you are investing in people, uh, with people that are not related to you, and the technical term is they're not a disqualified individual, uh, someone who is not related to you uh, up and down the lineal line, that's parents, grandparents, uh, children, grandchildren, yourself, your spouse. Uh, when you're not investing with someone who is not disqualified from you, then uh, it does not have to, um, it, uh, the profits do not have to flow back proportionally. Um, this particular deal is actually one that John, uh, our speaker on the 22nd, has in his own account or uh, did in, uh, in his own account. He's gonna be going over several real estate joint ventures because this is a, this is a structure where a small, uh, a small dollar account can take the majority of the profit. So let me, let me walk through this one very slow. Uh, this is a, a recent property, it was done last year in Maple Heights, Ohio. Uh, the purchase price of 37,500. Uh, $10,000 in rehab, the property sold for 97,500. There are three participants in this deal, they're not related to each other, they cannot be related uh, to each other uh, to do a, a real estate joint venture. Uh, John, and he'll go over this deal with, with several others, John is only putting $2,000 into this deal. Um, he's the person who found the deal. He's the person that's managing the rehab. He's the person that is taking care of, the, of, of coordinating the sale. Uh, so John is doing the, uh, the legwork. He's doing the office work. Um, the the three, three investors came together, did a, did a business plan. John will go over the business structure with you. Um, John's got the $2,000. Uh, the second investor uh, is the person who's putting up the majority of the money. Um, Joe Smith, for, uh, for in anonymity purposes, has 45.5 into this deal. The third partner uh, did not put any money uh, into this deal. And, and he, he, he's not able to put any money in because he's the person who's gonna do uh, the repairs. The third partner, uh, He's going to get his repair cost, ten thousand uh, dollars reimbursed, and a five thousand dollar profit. Uh, when um, he gets the first five thousand dollars in profit, when the deal sells. So again, three people came together. They sat down with an attorney. They had a real estate joint venture put together. I guarantee you, there's a uh, there's a uh, an attorney uh, that's a member of Freedom First who has done a real estate joint venture. John will actually go over uh, his his own structures. Um, the three people are not related to one another so that the profits do not have to flow back proportionally. So in this particular deal, $90,000 into it, um, uh, so, um, after, after, uh, after the fixed cost, it was $42,500 in profit to divide. Um, when they sat down uh, with the, uh, with the uh, closing agent, uh, the joint venture is presented uh, John gets 2,000, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the rehabber gets the first $5,000, and then what is ever left over uh, is then split 50-50 between John's IRA and uh, Joe's IRA. So each IRA in this particular deal collected $18,750. So John's $2,000 investment returned $18,750. Uh, Joe's 45-5 investment got 18,750. They might say, why would someone put up the majority of the money but only take 50% of the profit? Uh, understand that's still a 41% return on investment. Um, John architects these deals day in and day out uh, with IRA investors. Uh, he'll show you multiple deals uh, that he's done himself, multiple real estate joint ventures that he's got going in his own IRA. Um, again, that's why it's so important. Um, rather than just, uh, just hearing from, from us, the instructors, um, we want you to hear from the actual clients. So a lot of this is gonna be taught by, by clients. Um, a couple of the real estate joint ventures that we'll be talking about are actually deals that John has going in his own IRA. But a real estate joint venture, very powerful way to grow a small account uh, very, very quickly. Moving on. So if, if you're interested, there are three steps to get started. I'm not trying to open an account tonight. I just let you know that there are three steps uh, to opening an, an account. So you open an account, you fund an account, and then you tell us what you want to invest in. Very important, if you open an account with Equity Trust, let us know that you're a member of Freedom First. Uh, this Freedom First is part of National RIA. 
Uh, Equity Trust is a sponsor of National REIA. Um, members of Freedom First do not pay uh, a regular account maintenance fee the first year. Uh, if you're a member of Freedom First and you have to let us know that you are, uh, your first, uh, first year annual maintenance fee is a flat $99. Uh, we also have a Go Level Service program. Go Level Service gives you priority processing, uh, gives you free uh, wire transfers and free, uh, free um, expedited service certificates. That's all provided if you're a member of, uh, of, of Freedom First, uh, plus the educational, that we, uh, educational materials that we give to you. But let us know that you're a member of Freedom First whenever you open an account. Uh, that way we make sure that you get the national RIA uh, offer that is afforded to Freedom First members. And then, uh, so step one, you open your account. Uh, you might have a, uh, an account uh, that you need to transfer rollover, rollover to Equity Trust, or you can open a new account. If you're interested and if you cannot attend the workshop, just send me an email um, and I can get you in contact with the right people to answer your questions. Uh, that's step one. Step, uh, and I, I always have to say, uh, before you go out and find a deal, make sure that you have the IRA already put together. Uh, because if you call us and say, hey, I've got this great deal, but I need to move on it very quickly. Uh, if you don't have the account opened, at least set up to where we can, uh, can uh, take an earnest money uh, check out of that, uh, your self-directed IRA. Um, we can open an account very quickly. The problem is getting the funds transferred from one custodian to another. That could take up to six weeks. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, so it's always important that you, you have an account uh, opened, at least have uh, the minimum $500 into that account. That way, if you find a deal, you can at least uh, do the, the, uh, the earnest money out of that account, or we're waiting for your existing custodian uh, to get the funds brought over. So very important that you, you do things in the proper order. And then step two is uh, funding your account. Now, how are you gonna fund it? Are you going to, uh, to, to roll it over from, uh, from a current custodian? Uh, are you going to transfer an account uh, from, uh, if, if you're still employed, can you transfer an account uh, from where it is now to Equity Trust? Uh, or are you going to make a new contribution? Uh, so step, uh, step two is, is funding the account. Um, and step three is making the investment. And again, this is just a partial list of uh, what you can invest in. It's what you have knowledge of, what you have expertise in. That's what you can be investing in with a self-directed IRA. So why Equity Trust? Um, I talked a little bit about our experience. Uh, we are the nation's oldest and largest custodian. Uh, our founder, Dick Desage, uh, started this industry. Uh, and again, I, I, I can't say enough about, uh, we got our start at a RIA meeting. Uh, that's just how important RIA meetings can be to you. Uh, Dick Desage was uh, looking for a real estate investor and uh, ended up getting an idea at a RIA meeting uh, to, uh, to, you know, to now what grew into a $28.7 billion business. Uh, that's what we have under custody administration. Um, I talked a little bit about uh, Equity Trust. Um, with uh, Equity Trust, you're able to invest in both traditional and non-traditional assets. Um, so if you are in between an investment, rather than your, your money sitting in a, a money market account, uh, with Equity Trust, you can actually put it back into stocks, bonds, and mutual funds until that next deal uh, comes available. So with Equity Trust, you have the flexibility of investing in both traditionals and non-traditionals. A um, little bit about our customer service focus. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I said the importance of being a custodian. So whether you're going to invest with Equity Trust or someone else, make sure that that, uh, that entity is a custodian. Uh, in, in this industry, there are facilitators, administrators, and custodians. Facilitators write business for a custodian, I'm sorry, facilitators write business for an administrator, administrators write business for a custodian. But it's only the custodian that is licensed and regulated. So you wanna make sure that your money is with a licensed and regulated uh, uh, entity. Uh, Equity Trust, uh, because uh, we have uh, both traditional and non-traditional and offices in several states, uh, we actually have oversight by seven different government agencies. Um, so it's very important that you know what's the knowledge of your custodian, uh, you know, what's their size, uh, what's their financial backing. Um, all that's available uh, for, for public review with Equity Trust. Um, we'd be more than happy to share that with someone. A little bit about our, uh, our customer service. Um, our average account liaison that you talk to at Equity Trust has more than five years of experience. They've, uh, they've processed over 80, 
8,800 transactions and 2,800 of those are real estate specific. So there's no one more knowledgeable about real estate, uh, real estate and real estate notes uh, in the space than equity trust. Um, and then our online capabilities. Uh, John will go through our, uh, our platform in greater detail on the 22nd, just so you understand how to, how to speed up the transaction. Uh, there are times when, when speed of uh, investment is very important. Uh, that's why we have a very robust platform and you can actually do your investments and, and manage everything uh, from, uh, from your laptop, from your tablet, even your smartphone. Education, cannot, cannot talk enough about education. Uh, we're recognized as the, uh, the uh, leading educator in this space. Uh, we've been doing it longer than anyone else. Uh, we don't sell the education. A lot of it is, is, is on our website. Uh, it's free. Um, go to our website, uh, go to the resource tab of our website. Uh, you'll see a lot of white papers, a lot of uh, YouTube videos, uh, uh, some of our recordings that we've done. Um, you know, get yourself educated. And the best way to do that is actually attending the workshop that's coming up. Um, again, it's Tuesday the 22nd. It'll start at 6 p.m. This is Eastern time. This is an online workshop. Um, John will be the speaker, very, very gifted speaker, but he'll also be joined by several clients talking about the deals that they've done inside of their, uh, their own self-directed IRAs. Uh, what we're gonna cover, the agenda for the 22nd uh, is going through those case studies. Uh, there'll be, I, I believe it's uh, 11 different case studies uh, that John will be going through. Um, and many of them will be told by the client themselves. Uh, themselves. Um, I talked a little bit about how to partner. Uh, you saw a couple of examples of that tonight, uh, but John will be going through 10 different examples on how to partner uh, your IRA with various entities. Uh, so if you don't have enough money in your account, you can partner multiple accounts together uh, to, do, uh, to do an investment option. And the power of the Roth uh, IRA and the Roth conversion. Moving your money from your taxable bucket to your tax-free bucket so that you can actually start doing uh, real estate investing in a tax-free environment. You don't have to worry about uh, what's gonna happen in the future. Do you, you really think taxes are gonna go down or they're gonna go up? Probably gonna go up, that's a, that's a safer bet. Uh, you don't have to worry about that if you're in a Roth environment uh, because now your money is gonna grow at a tax-free environment. So we'll be talking about how to move your money from the taxable to the non-taxable bucket uh, with the Roth conversions. Um, it doesn't matter what, uh, what you're doing. If you're doing a buy and hold, fix and flip, if you're doing a wholesale deal, uh, uh, various strategies. John's gonna be going through a lot of different strategies, uh, not just one, uh, one or two case studies, uh, but almost anything that you're doing now can be done inside uh, of a Roth IRA. So it's not doing a new investment, uh, it's a new investment strategy. Um, and then uh, the, uh, the technology platform. Um, understanding how to speed that transaction along. John will go through uh, the My Equity platform with you uh, so you can understand our platform. Um, and I really like the small dollar investment section that John does. Uh, a lot on real estate uh, joint ventures, wrap loans, uh, lending your money out. Um, I see a lot of people that will lend it out but take a percentage uh, of the deal. John will give you a couple examples of that. Uh, he's done some of those deals himself. Um, and then another strategy, and Lee, uh, Leon alluded to this, is the private lending strategy. Um, we actually do more private lending uh, currently than, uh, than what uh, we do just a, a flat out real estate uh, transaction. So a lot of our clients are just lending their funds uh, to someone else. So he'll, he'll talk about a couple of examples of that uh, so you can see what people are doing and how they're structuring the deal. So in terms of um, the downloads, when you register for the workshop, uh, you will get the report, 10 Ways to Partner. You can also email me tonight and I'll, and I'll uh, get you these reports as well. We, we do reward people who attend the workshop. Uh, those people that attend the workshop will get a second report. It's the 100 investment options that you didn't know uh, you could do with your self-directed IRA. 100 different investment options. Uh, there's there's uh, short case studies on each of the investment options. And then there's also a video that we send you back it's conducting your first IRA transaction. This is a video that we did uh, with one of our clients going step by step. What did they do? How did they do it? Uh, what was the structure? Um, I, I like uh, when you learn through the eyes of our clients. Uh, so we actually did a, a video uh, with the client going through their first uh, IRA transaction. Um, 
Everyone will also have an opportunity, uh, just for requesting it, you'll get John's slide deck. Um, when you, uh, when you uh, request a, a, a strategy session, this is a free strategy session. Uh, it's getting your questions answered one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, there is a, a, a workshop manual that John has done in uh, 14 different um, uh, chapters. Uh, anyone who does a strategy session with John or someone on his team uh, will get this at no charge. Uh, so there is no charge uh, for the manual. Uh, anyone who attends can request the slide deck. Uh, that's a no charge. Any of the downloads, everyone receives the downloads. In terms of the price, this is a free workshop. Uh, in terms of how to register, look for an email uh, that's going to be coming from, uh, from Leon or Freedom First. Uh, it's going to have the link uh, specifically for Freedom First members to register. Um, it is free. We partnered with Leon. We partnered with free, uh, Freedom First. This is a free workshop uh, for Freedom First members. Uh, you can also email me and I will send you uh, the, uh, the link uh, this evening uh, to uh, Freedom First registration. So with that, I did notice a couple of, uh, let's see, can I see? Oh, I thought I had some questions here and I don't see any questions. Um, the, uh, Leon, that is all I had this evening. Um, again, I, I, I wanna make sure that everyone uh, takes advantage of what Leon has put together. Uh, this is a free uh, workshop. Uh, you'll, you'll learn a lot from John, but you'll also learn a lot from our clients that will be speaking. And I did ask uh, Leon, uh, Leon tonight if he would uh, share a couple of his stories as well, uh, because Leon has been an um, uh, a, uh, investor with Equity Trust for about 20 years. Uh, so uh, Leon, thank you so much for this evening. Thanks for being a long, long-term client of Equity Trust as well. I'll uh, throw it back to you, Leon. Okay, uh, thanks for a very informative presentation. Um, I mean, clearly, um, let me just I'll step back for a bit. And I touched upon it in the very beginning, and I'm gonna ask for one of my uh, good friends and supporters and Freedom First contributors, Scott Spear, to help me with this. So, and, and basically, uh, I go back to a time which was 10, 15 years ago from now, where I go off and take a class associated with uh, Equity Trust Company. Uh, I take the class, I actually took two classes for uh, two weeks in total with Dick Desich, I get some tapes and clearly I understand what it's all about and what's going on. And, and what happens is I, I go through, implement my items, but what I did was one of those fundamental things that's associated with Freedom First. I take my tapes, my, well, I'm saying tapes, but it was really CDs, I put mm -hmm. myself back an uh, extra generation beyond where I really was. <laughs> <laughs> We're in that same generation, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> but I take my CDs, and what I do is Scott is asking questions, and, and I want to uh, make him feel un uncomfortable. But we shared this before he and I, he Scott and I, and, and basically. I give them to him, and at that point in time, I know him fairly well, but not very, very well. And I give him, I give him these two. It really was probably fifteen uh, CDs in each one of these packages, and he goes back and he goes through them. And I, I really think that one of the important things to do is to look at how this might change you as an individual in, investor to hear some of the things that Scott has been able to do from that very beginning, okay? And he's really very good at articulating, if you will, 
some of the things that he's been able to do and challenge. And Scott, if you want to, you can go all the way into your storage units and all those things that you're doing there. But um, uh, it, it, it really started there with my basic understanding of what was possible with Roth IRAs. And I, I, I sort of gravitated, if you would, to Roth IRAs and the implications associated with taxes and how can, you could do that and how you could have multiple parties involved without tax implications from a negative perspective. And, and so I passed those on to Scott and, it, you know, he basically asked for them and being freedom first is something that said, okay, that's great. Here it is. Here's what you can do. And every, let me just put it this way. Each person is not going to tell you each and everything all the way down to the next eyebrow of what it is they're going to they're gonna do, but they're going to come pretty close to it because that is one of the fundamental things that separate us as the Real Estate Investment Association from others because it's not for profit and people share openly what it is that they do because their main objective is to have you be successful. So without me going on longer and people getting upset with me, I'm going to send it over to Scott to give you his input and thoughts because he's done a lot of stuff with Equity Trust Company. Actually, he certainly has. We, we've actually had Scott on our stage. Uh, this is someone who's a very, very knowledgeable uh, in, uh, investing a lot with, uh, with storage units. Uh, is Scott on the line? I'd, uh, I'd love to hear from him. He's right here. Excellent. Scott, you got it. <laughs> hey, Ken, how you doing? Hey, Scott, how are you, sir? Good, good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the presentation and joining us. And I see a couple people dropped off. That's a little unfortunate. Um, but um, anybody asked me, you know, I, I can't rave enough about equity trust and what they've done for me. Um, done a tremendous amount of business with them. Still continue to. Um, people are always willing to share information, whether it's John Bowens or somebody in client services or, or Ken. Um, you know, I've even had a couple of conversations with Rich Duchess. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, just to give you guys a couple ideas, I recently did a, uh, I, I, um, I put a self-storage facility under contract with my IRA. Uh, I put up a $2,000 earnest money deposit. I took that and wholesaled it to a guy. I made $20,000 on a wholesale fee. And that rolled right back to my Roth IRA. So all that was tax-free, boom, $20,000 tax-free, just like that. So I don't know about anybody else, but man, it gets me excited. Um, I know Joel out is like the biggest wholesaler out there, but I'm doing it tax free. So I'll, I'll take what I can. Um, and uh, let's see. yeah, that's what you, you don't know about it, but that's what supposed to be your presentation to freedom first in, <laughs> in, in February of next year. All right. I might not be here. Uh, but, but it's and, all virtual now. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and actually, I, I do want to what, thank Leon. Um, I started, you know, I looked at Equity Trust quite a while ago and started getting interested. And I was talking with Leon. He's like, well, I got some, I think they were eight track tapes, weren't they, Leon? <laughs> no, they were CDs. <laughs> they were CDs. <laughs> they were yeah. CDs. Yeah. So Leon, let me borrow them. And I listen to those things over and over again. And, uh, and, um, and they were just fantastic. And that's what we do at Freo. We just share information. Um, you know, I, I've done a lot of deals in my IRAs. Um, I, I can give some screenshots. I get really excited when I start talking about this. And um, But, uh, you know, what, what Ken was saying about the Roth IRA, and, and read that book that he mentioned. That's a really, really good book. Um, I learned a lot from it. Um, you're going to... I have to read it a couple of times. If you're like me, you might have to read it a couple of times. So <laughs> just to understand it. So, yeah. so, so you got uh, that book again, Ken? Can you hold that up? Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's the, power, the Power of Zero by David McKnight. Power of Zero by David McKnight. Um, and Scott, Scott, are you a member of Freedom First? Yeah. I, wrote it down. I, I didn't know that. And I'll tell you what, uh, that's worth the price of membership right there. I, again, you get, a, you get a rub elbows with people who are respected in this industry. Scott, uh, Scott teaches people how to invest uh, with, with rental units. 
uh, Leon can tell you how to put uh, put a, a deal together. Uh, Joe, Susan, uh, it, that is worth the price of admission right there. Uh, you're, you're rubbing elbows with people who have done hundreds of deals, who have got decades in this business. Um, that's the power of a, uh, being in a RIA environment. Uh, and I do like that it's a, it's a not-for-profit. Um, yes, I speak all, uh, to RIAs are for-profit, not-for-profit. Uh, the not-for-profits uh, are really heavy on education. Uh, and it, you know, it's, always, it's always good to be in a space where uh, it's, uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to guard your wallet. Uh, you know, th this is for education. Uh, you know, Leon and Joe and Susan, uh, they've done a great job. Uh, Scott, uh, you know, the education that you uh, provided uh, to our clients, uh, top notch. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Ken. And anybody who's on this, that September 22nd thing, get on that thing. And I put in the chat box, invite your family and friends because they're going to, they could become your money lenders. I, Equity Trust is going to show them. Okay. I'm going to say family and friends, but John Bones is going to speak more about family. You can loan to family. I loan to my brother yeah. and my sister loans to me. Um, but invite your family and friends to attend that. It is free and they could become your money lenders or your partners too. So I can't stress enough how to get, you know, to get your family and friends involved with this. Get them on the thing on Tuesday, the 22nd. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. That's it for me. I could go on and on, but I'm going to stop now. I, I will say one other thing. John Bones and I, some days we talk three, four times a day. Uh, sometimes we won't talk for 30 days, but um, you guys are going to learn a lot from John. Uh, he's just as knowledgeable as Ken is, and um, you guys oh, he's, know it. John, John's half my age and twice as smart. <laughs> he's, he, he is... Uh, uh, I can't say enough about the guy. Uh, I, I learned a lot from him. Uh, John was trained by, uh, by Dick Desage. Um, you know, he, uh, uh, um, I, I, I call him a bit of a nerd, uh, that he loves reading tax code. He gets excited by reading tax code. Um, you know, he, uh, he loves architecting deals on how, um, how to put together a deal for maximum tax savings. Uh, that's what he excels at. That's what he teaches. And again, he, yeah, he's taught over 50,000 people. Um, you know, he's, uh, yeah, he, he really is about half my age. Uh, and, uh, and yes, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not, uh, he is, he is twice as smart as I am. Uh, the guy is, uh, the guy is so, so impressive. <laughs> right. So Leon, we'll throw it back to you. Okay. Well, clearly, uh, uh, I think that we, touched upon a lot of the items, if you will, associated with investing with self-directed or the IRA. And whatever, my past experience has been very simple. Whenever I think I really understand it, I say, oh my goodness, I should have done this. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, uh, are you, and, and that's just going back a year or two if you go back, you know, 10, 20 years, you say, wow, how much money could I have actually made? And what will my financial position be if I had actually exercised and utilized the powers that ex existed in the, the self-directed IRA? So I want to invite everyone again to participate in the upcoming workshop. You'll see a lot of things coming out about it. I want to thank um, Kent and I want to thank Scott and others who have provided their input. I don't know how to put it to people to have them go away from this meeting with an understanding of what the importance is of what it is that we're talking about. You know, because um, I spoke to the fact earlier that I wish I would have done something a little bit different. I could take two, three properties that are that I I should have done a little bit differently in my self-directed IRA. 
it was clearly it was not something that would have me not be on the call with you, but from a dollars and cents perspective, it would be something that would have been from a financial perspective, a lot better for me as an individual. <clears throat> and when you, so that's one side of the fence. I go to the other side of the fence. One of the things that happens is, and I'll tell how many people, I don't know how many people I want to tell this. How many people got on a call? Oh, we only got 15 people. <clears throat> so, and I say it this way because a lot of people get really hung up on how do, how is it that I buy this property and do these things and, and have the financing to be able to do it. So there are a number of people on this call and I'm going to guess that maybe some of these people that I don't know about before are maybe, uh, you know, they're, they're people who want to invest their money and invest their money safely. A couple of key things. There's no such thing as zero risk. If you come up with it, I want that zero risk to be, I don't have to die. But, uh, <clears throat> You know, it doesn't exist. So uh, what you want to do is create a situation where you're minimizing risk to the extent where it approaches zero, even if it's not zero. So if you have monies to lend, then where's the best place to go? As a person who has monies and you want to invest, set up a self-directed IRA, cover some of the pieces that was covered by Kent. And what you do is you use that as your investment vehicle. And if you do that, and you do it by talking to a person like myself, Scott, Joe McGuire, we go to a whole bunch of people and we'll show you not how to eliminate it, but how to reduce it to virtually zero. That really is what it's about. And I borrow my monies from people who have monies in equity trusts. Uh, and, and, and what we do is <clears throat> we're then able to create a win-win situation for everyone. And that allows me to get monies at substantially low, lower than any bank would uh, provide and at the same time <clears throat> allow us to be able to fund our projects and do them in a way that is legal. That and we have an attorney. You you talked about an attorney before. The attorney is very simple. He's on. He's our vendor member. He's Steve Peterson. He'll come. He's done many many deals for me. Many deals for Scott. Many deals for others. And and it allows you to be able to then do some of the things that has been outlined by, by Kent using equity trust company. And I, I mean, as I sort of jokingly talked about in the very beginning, uh, I'm from Texas. I won't mention that company down there. I don't think they hold a candle to equity trust company. And, and I know well, I know about them very, very well. I can compare the two next to each other and I'm gonna always go with equity trust. And, and, and the thing to do is to look at another way of sort of, what's the right words, you know, giving your investment opportunity a new boost, a level that's higher. And I'm not one of those people that's really great on sort of going through and sort of picking one company versus the other or sort of boosting things up, but it, it gives you another, another view. And whether you go with equity trust company or something else, the, the key thing is you need to really look at, look at self-directed IRAs. And I think if you do that in a to total per perspective, equity trust is going to come out on top. So uh, that said, uh, I think I've covered most of the other, most of the items. And 
if there's something else people have or want to talk about, then let's sort of go through it now. And because I know people want to get to, well, I don't know what kind of football game comes on, but it, all these foot, football uh, folks that want to go, get to the game. So uh, what else do we have? Any other questions, concerns? Uh, Leon, I want to again thank you for tonight and uh, just remind people bring your questions. Um, John will have his staff um, on uh, on the call with him. Uh, so if people uh, have individual questions, uh, they can uh, they can chat uh, with someone on John's team and also schedule a uh, follow up strategy session. Uh, uh, that that's all available to you. Um, it, it, John will stay on the uh, the line and take individual questions. Uh, once the call ends, um, you know, th this is a guy who uh, uh, sometimes I have to call him up and say, "John, your wife wants you to come home. Uh, get out of the office." Um, so uh, he uh, he will stay until all the questions are uh, are asked and answered. Um, you know, he's available to you uh, uh, just uh, just for picking up the phone. Um, you know, he, I, I can't say enough about uh, the education uh, that he's put together. Uh, but uh, he'll be he'll be bringing a team with him uh, to do the presentation on the 22nd. Ken, uh, thank you very much. I um, I'm very uh, like many others on this call. I know John from way back uh, when, and he's excellent. He's the best you're going to get uh, from a self-directed and IRA perspective. Uh, so. Uh, I'm going to let folks go. Uh, it's about a quarter to uh, nine now. If someone has got questions or con uh, anything you've got some concerns about, they need some more details. I know Scott and myself and probably Joe will be around for a couple of minutes just to address your uh, questions of our concerns. Most importantly, you heard what we talked about tonight. The most important thing is that you be on the Tuesday night call on September 22nd to uh, hear more details. And you, if you think that we talked, the things that we talked about was, were good, be on the call on September 22nd and then you'll understand that we were just brushing over the top of the leaves Absolutely. on the ground. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Thank you so much, Leon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Anyone else? Thanks, everybody. Any questions, you can stay on and we'll try to address that. Leon, yes. I, I just had a quick clarification. Um, yes. I, I want to ask it as simple as I can, right? Yes. I have a Roth IRA right now with yes. somebody else. If I transfer it to equity trust, they're, they're the custodians, right? Yes. And if, if I buy a property, the title on the property is equity trust in care of my name? It says equity trust for the benefit of, and that's the FBO portion of it. Typically okay. the slashes in between it and then your name. And then I can just keep buying properties. All my rent money goes into my equity trust account. All my expenses for repairs or anything flows out. That fundamentally, that's correct. So here's the thing. I need to make sure you understand that I can't represent equity trust. Yeah. I have an erect, as you heard before, I have an equity trust account that I've had for almost 20 years. So I'm giving you the information as best I can from my personal perspective. So what you're outlining is correct, but I'm not sure if your account, given what you just said, is with equity trust company or with someone else. You know, yeah. so uh, clearly there are, there are things that you can do to switch accounts from one company to, to the right. next. Those specific details I'm not privy to, but you know, it certainly sounds like something that you can do. And when you do that, you, you know, it would be under the account associated with equity trust. 
Okay. Okay. So 20, uh, I can go to their webinar and then I can get more specifics, but that, but that's the gist. I mean, yeah. it would be as opposed to me going out and buying properties right now in my name, that would be the difference, right? Well, I'm not sure that that would be the only thing you would need to call equity trust and talk with them to work out where you are and and how your account is structured and whether or not you know it's something that is i mean you clearly i don't understand the specifics of what your account is and how it's structured so one of the things to do would and i'll put this out as a suggestion Scott, if you have some other ideas, please don't hesitate to interject. You know, one of the things that you would do would be to maybe get back to a person like Kent Kinsler and say, here's my situation. What is my path forward? Yeah. Because I can't represent Equity Trust Company, one. And two, I, I don't know all the details of what it is that you're talking about. You know. And, and I, I hear what you're saying in general, don't get me wrong, but there are a lot of specifics that I can't cover because I'm not aware of them and it will take a long discussion to go through that. 